Hi, I'm Mr. B, and welcome back to Mr. B's How to Read a Sentence. This is our third video in the series. The first two videos, we looked at our linking verb and how the predicate noun will follow a linking verb. And then we looked at the linking verb and how a predicate adjective will follow a linking verb. Today, we're going to move on to the action verb, which is actually step five in Mr. B's How to Read a Sentence. So, let's tackle these sentences. First off, we look at our first sentence. Bob baked a cake in the oven. If you'll look at your directions, step number one says, isolate the prepositional phrases and then cross them out. So let's do that. We have one prepositional phrase in the oven. We'll cross that out and then we'll look at the rest of the sentence. The next thing we want to do is determine the verb in the sentence. Baked is the verb and we ask ourselves, is baked an action verb or a linking verb? Baked is an action verb. Then we want to look left 95% of the time to determine our subject. So we look left of baked and we find Bob, and Bob is going to be our subject. Bob baked. Subject and predicate. That's our basic sentence. Then you have to, have to ask yourself about the rest of the sentence. What did Bob bake? Bob baked a cake, which makes it a direct object, because the cake directly received the action of being baked. Bob baked a cake. The next sentence, Sally threw the ball to Sam. Again, we'll isolate the prepositional phrase and cross it out. To Sam is our prepositional phrase. We'll get rid of it. Then we're left with the basic sentence, Sally threw the ball. Then we ask ourselves, what's the verb in the sentence? Through is the verb. We ask ourselves, is it a linking verb or an action verb? And that act of throwing is going to be an action verb. So we've got an action verb. Then we look left to find our subject, and Sally becomes our subject. Sally threw the ball. Then you have to ask yourself, is there something in the sentence that directly received the act of being thrown? And you say, why, yes, there is. It's the ball. So the ball becomes the direct object because ball directly received the action of being thrown. Okay, so now we have action verb and a direct object, which is a noun that directly receives the action of the verb. Things do get a little tricky when you're talking about direct objects because you'll often find more than one noun after the verb. And you really have to ask yourself which verb actually received the action of the verb. So in the sentence, Martha cooked Sam a hot dog, we've got the action verb, which is cooked. We've got the subject, which is Martha, to the left of the verb. And then we have Sam a hot dog. You have to ask yourself, what directly received the action of being cooked. And you have to say, Sam was not cooked by Martha. Martha cooked the hot dog. So the hot dog becomes your direct object. Sam is actually the indirect object, which is what we're going to talk about in the next video. The next example of things that might go wrong is that Sally rode the train to Denver. You have to ask yourself, what's the verb in the sentence? It's rode. Is rode an action verb or a linking verb? It's an action verb. We look to the left of the action verb to find our subject, and Sally is the subject. So we have Sally rode the train to Denver. You have to ask yourself, which of these nouns directly received the action of being ridden? And you say, well, Denver is a prepositional phrase, and Sally did not ride the city of Denver. So we cross that out, and we're left with the sentence, Sally rode the train. The train is the direct object because it directly received the action of being ridden by Sally. The direct object is the noun following the action verb that directly receives the action of that verb. All right, we've got that down.